We are continuing in a series of messages on the appearing of Christ, His second coming. <clears throat> you that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now Christ's coming <clears throat> is actually the consummate or ultimate event. Amen. Amen. And it's, a, it's an open and a public event. <clears throat> the scriptures speak of Him coming mm -hmm. as public. The scriptures speak of his appearing. That's, that's public. Peter speaks of his revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's, that's public. In 1 Timothy 6 it says God will show him. Mm -hmm. that's, that's public. So we're talking about a public event. <clears throat> now this uh, teaching of Christ's coming is very a very practical doctrine. It's not a, not a teaching that you want to speculate about yeah. or confuse with human opinion. It's amazing there are some very foundational teachings in Scripture that men tend to play with yeah. and uh, toss them around in human opinion and come up with different what do you think about this and here's what I think about that and you just always want to just plug your ears when you're around yeah. someone like this because something right. as important as the second coming of Christ you don't want to speculate about this mm -hmm. at all. It's not a cold and lifeless doctrine. If you can see it, it has a direct impact upon you. Now tonight we're going to deal with a text in 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. Sort of give a, at least base our remarks upon this. And the title of this is Keep the Commandments, Keep the Commandment Until Then. Keep the Commandment Keep the commandment until then. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'll take a moment here. Let's see, what, Jeremy, you, you keep that. Just, just keep that. What did I mean when I said keep that? Mm -hmm. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. All right. All right, here's the text. 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 14. But thou, O man of God, mm -hmm. let me say something right here. God doesn't have a whole lot of good things to say to someone that's not, quote, a man of God mm -hmm. or a woman of God. Mm -hmm. Thou, man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Powerful, powerful statement. Amen. Keep this commandment, this is a rather lengthy commandment, would you not say? Rather extensive commandment. Which means that all the resources, remember, in God's, in God's right. economy, right. the commandments are always accompanied by the resources to keep them. Amen. So if you, if you can ever register in your heart that God really means this, everything that's required is received. Amen. Jesus illustrated this in some different kind of commandments he gave to some people in his day. Like he said to a layman, pick up your bed and walk. That's a commandment. <laughs> but the power came with the commandment mm -hmm. to do it. Go wash in the pool of Siloam, said to a blind man. You'll be able to see. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the kind of commandments. These are effectual commandments coming mm -hmm. with the part. Now let's look first of all at the concept of a commandment. How does, uh, how does God talk about the commandments? That's, <laughs> that's what I'm interested in knowing. Mm -hmm. However he does, that's how we want to talk about the commandments. Mm -hmm. Amen. These are commandments to men, not commandments to angels. God does command angels, and but it says angels, unlike men, go out and do His word and come back real quick. Just go out and do it, come back. So they're a bit unlike men. Commandments. Here's a statement made in 1 Corinthians seven nineteen: Circumcision is nothing. That being a Jew. Uncircumcision is nothing. That's being a Gentile. Mm -hmm. 
but the keeping of the commandments of God. That we say that's that's where it's at. <laughs> so whether you have the uh, belonging to the let's just kind of update it into today's language, belonging to the right church. That's not it. Not be not being like the other fellow. That that's not it. It's keeping the commandments. That's it. Let's take another text. First John two four. That's how he talks now about the commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Amen. And the truth is not in him. Well, of course I did. I have come from a background where not many people said I know him. I mean that was that was kind of a rare thing when any you'd hear anybody say, I know him. I just maybe in their singing they did, I know him. But it was uncommon. But if you ever come across someone that says, I'm no God. <coughs> I'm, I'm in fellowship with God, and they don't keep His commandments, just discard what they said, because they're lying. They don't know Him. They do not know Him. 1 John 3.24 He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He has given us. So how's that for keeping the commandments? You're, you got, you, you're in God. That evidences you're in God. God's in you. <clears throat> You don't keep the commandments to get into God. You keep them because you are in God. And He's in you. Here's another. 2 John 1, 6. This is love that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. It's consistency. Another. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do His commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and enter in through the gates of the city. <laughs> is that, that's blessed, isn't it? <laughs> so when you, you arrive at the other side, there's a, using a little holy imagination, you know, as you come through the line, so to speak, you'll be, is this person noted for keeping the commandments? Did they do the commandments? So well, this, this, by God's grace, this individual did the commandments, as he has right to the tree of life. <laughs> You don't want to speculate about what the ones that didn't. I mean, pretty evident. Mm -hmm. First John two four tells us there's no such thing as knowing God and being disobedient. Right. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. The truth not in him. So this is not possible. This is what we call an incongruity. You can't mix it together. Mm -hmm. You cannot be acquainted with God and disobedient at the same time. That's right. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. All, con all conflicting doctrine notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. You might be surprised how much people tend to apologize for the disobedience of the church members. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of explanations for it. But God doesn't give an a favorable right. explanation of it at all. So commandments. Now there are some fundamental commandments. When you think about commandments, and this is the sense of our text, he's not talking about it. Uh, Oh, there's hundreds and probably thousands of commandments in the scriptures, some having to do with very small details. But he's talking about a lot of these larger commandments in, un, in which all these others are grouped. They're grouped within, like, summary commandments. So I want to look briefly at these fundamental commandments because if you can keep these, all the others become doable. Now, this the Lord. <coughs> The Lord Jesus spoke of uh, the law and the prophets, what the law and the prophets testify. Here's what he said. A man asked him, which is the great commandment in the law? Now that's a good, that's a good question to ask. Some people would say, which is the great commandment? They'd say, don't use an instrument. <laughs> you know, some people, that's what they say. <laughs> Or make sure the right name is over the door. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Which Jesus said were until John. Mm -hmm. well, I want to just make it quite clear here. This is not an announcement of the premier things in the kingdom of God, although these are in there, understand. 
Solomon, if you were to ask Solomon, what is the, how do you sum it up, Solomon? How do you sum up this duty of man? Here's what he was telling. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Well, that's been updated, Solomon. Yep. That's nothing about believing Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nothing about having faith. Mm -hmm. Nothing about having hope. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, it wasn't revealed at that time. Understand, this is the denigrated Solomon. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to show you here is the commandments have been elevated in Christ. They're at a, they're at a higher level. Mm -hmm. yep. Let's have Micah. Micah. Bring Micah for us. What would you say? Are the summation of the, com of the commandments. What God tells us to do. So Micah said, He has showed thee, O man, what is good. What does the Lord require of thee but to do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with thy God. So there's those three. Summary type commandments. Well, let's call John to the witness. And how would you doubt that John, now, John, that Jesus has entered into the world, laid down his life, rose from the dead, returned to heaven, and enthroned at God's right hand. How now do you see this matter of the commandments? What, what, what do we say now about the commandments? Is it like a larger summation now? 1 John 3.23 This is His commandment mm -hmm. that we should believe on the name of the Son of God Amen. and love one another mm -hmm. as He gave us commandments. I don't Amen. Come up. Amen. <laughs> all these others that we read, they're all in, they're all in that those two things. Everything the law and the prophet said, everything that Solomon said, everything Micah said, they're all, they're all in this. But see, this is a larger, yeah. larger view. So believe on the name. If you don't believe, if you don't trust in the one God sent, any other concept of obedience falls to the ground. Doesn't Amen. mean anything. Amen. Nothing at all. If there's not a personal reliance on the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing else counts. Mm -hmm. And if you don't love the people, the other people who are doing that, that voids everything. Mm -hmm. So that, he summed it up very grand, grand fashion there. Concept of commandments. So the commandments like a large umbrella kind of commandments are what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So you may have down in the details of life you may have times when your affection is not set on things above. When you're, see, you've got to, you want to, you do have to do that. Understand, but this is these are higher level commandments that make the other more doable. If you work real hard at praying all the time, you say, there it is, pray always in everything you think, and you just work and work at that. Will you just wear yourself out? <laughs> because there's not power in that commandment, enough power. To do this consistently. You've got to see this other. Believe in the name of the Son of God. Amen. Love his brethren. Now then in that posture. Look back at this commandment about prayer. It, it becomes doable. Amen. Now let's look at commandments philosophically. For a moment. <clears throat> so why should you keep the commandments? Mm -hmm. Well God created you. So why wouldn't you keep the commandments. Of the one that created yeah. you. So even on a philosophical level. This is true. Or. We are fundamentally ignorant about things of God, so why would we rejoice? Because He gives us something to do that channels our affection and activity in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And His commandments are all considerate commandments. Mm -hmm. He has His glory in mind, but has our good in mind as well, so it makes sense to keep them. And they're all associated with goodness. It's a good God. Amen. So even on a philosophical level, it makes sense to keep the commandments. Now let's look at it from a new covenant viewpoint. How does how do people in Christ, how do they consider the commandments? When you talk about the commandments. Well, here's what they say. This is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. See, so if the commandments hurt, then you've got a little work on another, you've got to work on another aspect of life. You've got to work on believing in the name of the Son of God and loving His brethren. See, because if the commandments are like a thorn, yeah. do I have to do that? Well, no, there's an alternative. You could, you could go to hell. It's an, it's an alternative. I mean, consider the alternatives. That's an alternative. You could stand before the judgment seat of Christ and have to account for your disobedience. That's, that's, that's a, not an acceptable alternative. His commandments are not grievous. Amen. 
That is, if you can ever see them like they are, Amen. you will really want to do them. Amen. Here again, 2 John 1, 6. This is love that we walk after His commandments. See, so this, this is an outlet. This is how you can confirm your love to God. Let us not love in word only. This is toward our brother. Don't just say, I love you, I you know, I love you. In deed and truth, love. Well, how much more toward God? Uh -huh. We just don't say, I love you, Lord, and go our own separate ways. The commandments of God are not grievous to us, and we, it confirms. Amen. It confirms our love toward God. <clears throat> and in the, the, command, the nature of the commandments, uh, this is one of the secrets to answered prayer. Do you want God to answer your prayers? <clears throat> I tell you, uh, this is growing on me more and more. You do not want prayer to be just a formality. Uh -huh. You just repeat something to God. You want you want to pray with a mind that being heard. Amen. Amen. And your prayer is being answered. Well, here, here's the thing that John said about the relationship of keeping the commandments to prayer. 1 John 3.22 Whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are well pleasing in His sight. So see, this has a direct bearing on whether your prayers are answered or not. Peter related the answered prayer even to husband, uh, husbands and wives, even to their relationship with one another. He said that if, if you did, didn't learn to get along and be as joint heirs of life together, that it will hinder your prayers. How's, how's that? So see, spiritual life... <coughs> Is not just one isolated segment of life. It has bears on your association with God, whether you hear your prayers or not, whether you love Him or not, it all bears on that. So this is the New Covenant view of the commandments of God. They're not, they're not grievous. Well, if you were to ask an Israelite at Sinai, how about those commandments? Well, weren't they? Weren't those wonderful, those commandments? They said, whew, it's pretty grievous, don't they? Let's not talk about them anymore. Let's, let's talk about something else. They were grievous to them because their hearts were changed. Mm -hmm. That's right. But in Christ, your hearts changed. Amen. And the very commandments that at one time looked undoable and were even offensive, that very thing becomes precious to you. Amen. Yes. You say things like, what wilt thou have me to do? Give me a commandment yes. to do. Uh -huh. Give me a commandment to do, Lord. Now let's look at the concept of obedience. Obedience is... Remember, our text says, keep this commandment until the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. Now, what about this? Uh, obedience is part of keeping the commandment. Well, obedience in Christ is willing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is willing obedience. Mm -hmm. Paul said, uh, we are confident, I say, and willing. To be absent from the body and presence with the Lord. I can't Amen. begin to tell you how many people I've heard say these were these were they, they were called preachers, but they really weren't. They were they really weren't preachers, but they were called that. And they would say something like this: "Well, I want to go to heaven, but but not right now." Yeah. Well, have you ever heard anybody say this? Exactly. Well, thank God. Just that's like an infirmity of being around certain people as you hear the, <laughs> these kind of statements. Gosh. But. Uh, there's willingness. I am willing to be absent from the body. Say, well, I don't know. Like maybe, maybe something bad will happen if you think that way. Well, your, our times are in His hand. Mm -hmm. So you trust God in this. You know, your death is going to be just as timely as your birth was. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it will be attended by all the grace that's needed to die. So you have to have grace to live and you have to have grace to die. Yeah? Amen. But you'll be given that. Amen. So we're willing, we're willing to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Here's Hebrews 13, 18. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. Well, that's, that's good, isn't it? Yes. Isn't that now you have to confess it's, it's blessed to be around a person or a people who are willing mm -hmm. to live honestly. It just does something for you. It's, a, it's like an exhortation to you. And it's like a promise at the same time. Mm -hmm. Revelation 22, 17. The spirit of the bride say, the spirit and the bride, 
Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and every let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him drink of the water of life freely. <laughs> So this, this is a piece of good news, I tell you, that if you want it, you can have it. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you don't want it, you can't have it. Right, Whosoever will. Now see, this is a trait of those in Christ. They want what God mm -hmm. offers. Now the environment in which we obey is the world. The concept of obedience that we presently have is not going to hold on the other side. It's going to be a different kind of environment where there are not restraining influences or competing influences. So, that's, so we'll, we'll, we'll follow the Lamb wherever, wherever, wherever so ever he goes. But it's going to be a different sort of context than it is right now. Right now in this world, the concept of obedience includes being in an arena of contradiction and dealing with it. Not trying to pretend like it's not there. Right. Not putting headphones on and drowning it out. Trying to pretend like no conflict's really there. We are getting commissioned with weaponry that casts down imaginations. Mm -hmm. And every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. See, obedience is in this kind of context. Mm -hmm. To obey God, you've got to ignore some things. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to throw down violently. There's some thoughts that don't go willingly. You've got to like throw them down mm -hmm. violently, aggressively. There's an inner warfare going on. If you're going to keep the commandment until then, you must know that this is an arena of conflict. You're going to do this. Galatians 5.17 that says the flesh lusts against the spirit mm -hmm. and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Yeah. Your flesh can't do what it really wants to do because it's got the spirit. Uh -huh. your, your spirit, it can't do what it wants to because the flesh is. So you got, you hit your, it's in this kind of a context. This, you keep the commandment in this kind of a context. He doesn't put you in a vacuum uh -huh. where there's no competing influence, no contrary thoughts, everything just smooth sailing. Then he says, keep the commandment. See, it's not like that. It's in the war zone, you're told. Keep the commandment until then. And everything that's in the world, everything that's in the world is against you. Here's how John put it. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, is not of the Father. What is of the world? So here you've got these... These competing influences against you, everything is in the world, everything by nature that you want, lust of the flesh, everything you look at that you can see with these eyes, lust of the eye, mm -hmm. and the pride of life wanting to be somebody in this world, mm -hmm. that's against you. And in spite of the presence of those things, he says, keep my commandments, keep them. Now there's a new, no, what is the new covenant distinction in uh, being obedient? What does it have to do about, say about obedience is different? Romans 6, 17 says that we have obeyed from the heart. Mm -hmm. Now see, obedience is from the heart in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not grit your teeth and do it anyway. It's not that sort of thing. It's from the heart. It's a different kind of obedience mm -hmm. than Israel had at Sinai. Or when Israel went into Canaan, it's a different kind of obedience. It's not an obedience that's driven by a fear I'm going to die if I don't. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a thing, I love my Lord and whatever He says I'll do because He's done me, as the old spiritual says, He ain't never done me nothing but good. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. That's, that's, that's clumsily stated, but it's right on the head. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way it is. Yeah. And again, obedience involves the activity of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> this is 1 Peter 1-2. Remember, our text said, keep the commandment until the appearing of the Lord. And this all has to do with keeping this commandment. Elect, we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God through sanctification of the Spirit unto, or in order to, obedience. Mm -hmm. Here it is. So the Holy Spirit has got to put you in a place where you can obey. Sanctify means He moves you over 
into this other area where the commandments become a doable. Because the commandments, whether it's believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, which is a summary commandment, or whether it's love one another, which is a summary commandment, obeying those commandments is to you like a lame man picking up his bed and walking. It's that hard. It's just as hard for you to do that as it was for Lazarus to come walking out of the grave. Yeah. It's just that hard. But but Lazarus did come out of the grave. And the impotent man did pick up his bed and walk. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kind of arrangement. Why the Holy Spirit enters in and enables you, see, to do this by putting you into a realm where obedience is, is doable and empowering you to do it. Yeah. And obedience is, of course, related to faith. Romans 16, 26 refers to the obedience of faith. Obe if you want to do it, if you wanted to just take the word obedience and just summarize it down to the bottom line, just go sift all through all the commandments, get down to the bottom line, the total is believe Christ. Uh -huh. it, that'd be the, kind of the bottom line. Have faith. Have faith in God. Remember the disciples said, so why they saw Jesus curse this fig tree and it dried up from the roots. The next day they saw it and said, look at this, they're talking about this. And Jesus said, have faith in God. That, that just resolves a lot of things. Now let's look at the commandment to be kept. <laughs> it was rather a lengthy, uh, lengthy commandment that flee these things. Well, what things is he talking about? Fleeing. Flee these things. Let's, let's look at them here. <clears throat> this is First Timothy 6, 8 through 10. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Mm -hmm. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and, and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some having have coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Mm -hmm. But thou, man of God, flee these things. You know what? Run, run from them. Run from them. Flee these things. Look at them. Covetousness. Riches. Hurtful lusts. Love of money. Flee those. Flee those things. Why? Because they'll, they'll keep you from keeping the commandment. Mm -hmm. They'll stop you from keeping this commandment. You won't be able to do it. These are, these are cords that the world uses to tie you to the temporal order. Mm -hmm. That's just what they are. And in some countries, these don't have as strong of a pull as, as they do in others. In some countries, just just in Sri Lanka today, this evening in Sri Lanka, where the that uh, tsunami wave hit. See, they're not thinking about money and riches and things. They're thinking about food and living and not dying from illness. <laughs> and can I find my child in this rubble somewhere? Mm -hmm. See, this is a little bit different. When you're in a country like we are in, this uh, opulent country, and a lot of uh, a lot of goods all around, you can go to the mall and see all kind of things you like. And if you can't go, they'll send you a magazine to your door that you can look at it. And mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that turn you away from keeping the commandment until Jesus comes. It's a lot of things to help you forget that Jesus is coming, that's and right. that, as though you're just going to be here all the time. Yeah, well, you're right. not going to be just be here. All the time. <laughs> so the commandment involved fleeing those things, and the commandment involved, involved following some things. Getting away from some things, getting close to other things. Mm -hmm. The things to follow were righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Get as much as, much of those things as you can. And the commandment that involved also fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, if you're going to keep believing, you're going to have to fight to do so, because Satan's Satan didn't go to lunch when you came to Christ. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't he hasn't backed off and said, I'll back off now. He's not doing this. You have to fight to keep your faith. Mm -hmm. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. And lay hold on eternal life. Get a good grip on it. Mm -hmm. Get a good grip on it. So you have eternal life in Christ Jesus, but not all of it. You just barely got hold of it. Just yeah. got kind of got the corner of it. 
It's like when they entered into the Canaan land. They, when they got in Canaan, they were really in Canaan, but they were just in the border. They were just, <laughs> they were just inside the border and had to start fighting. Well, you did too, see? Yeah. Just part of the commandment now to keep. Keep this commandment. Get away from the things that anchor you to this world. Follow the things that anchor you to that world. Amen. Fight to keep your faith. Don't let anyone take it from you. Amen. Lay hold of eternal life. Be sure about it, in other words. Mm -hmm. Yes. Be sure. I know there's a, a hackneyed question that people ask. If you were to die tonight, do you know you'd go to heaven? And But that uh, it's not a scriptural question technically, but it's a good thought to think about. But it scares some people. They want to... Well, I think so. I'm trying as hard as I can. Well, that probably they probably lied when they said that. Would you be? Would you dare to say that you're trying as hard as you can? I mean, who is it that can honestly make a statement like that? I'm I'm doing the best I can. Who who is who would dare to stand before God and say that? I'm doing the best I can. Well, that isn't what you want to say. You want to say, Lord, I believe. Help thy my unbelief. Amen. Give me some strength Amen. here. Come to my aid. All that's involved in keeping the commandment. See, the manner, and also the manner in which you keep the commandment is important. He says, keep this commandment without spot and unrebukable. That's us to be kept. So that this rules out trying. Yeah. It's not trying. It's keeping it. Without spot. And how long do you keep it? Mm -hmm. Until he comes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's a that's that's an extensive commandment. Keep the commandment until he comes. Let's look at the logic of this commandment. <clears throat> Does it make sense to say something like this? Does it make sense to say something as large and as strong as this to all believers from a young Timothy to an aged Paul or Peter? Does it does it make sense to do this? Well, yes, it does. And if you take it seriously, you'll realize that you have to have the means to keep this. You're going to have to have some help to do this. And of course, God's pledged to do this. This is the glory of this. Mm -hmm. If you're anxious for Christ's return, God will reciprocate. He'll reciprocate by funneling to you everything that's needed to be ready yeah. for Him to come. Now let's look at the, at the logic of the commandment. 2 Peter 1.3 We've been given the need, the means to do this. Now this is the point. According as His divine power hath given unto us, hath given unto us, all things that pertain to life and godliness, through, here's the catch now, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to His glory and virtue. So here's the situation. Everything that is needed for people to get from earth to heaven has already been given to humanity from heaven by God so it's all within reach. Amen. Well, now here's the catch. You get it only to the extent you know the Lord. <clears throat> it's through the knowledge of the Lord. That's mm -hmm. how you... That is to say the more you know about Him the more this passes to you. Amen. The more ignorant you are of God the less of this passes to yeah. you. This, this is how, how it works. So now does it make sense when the scriptures say draw near? See, Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. The closer you get, the more these supplies they start increasing in abundance. Coming, Amen. Coming to you. Just check and see if this is not the case. See if this is not the case. That you, uh, you have become more acquainted with the Lord. You see Him more clearly. The things of God are more clear. All of a sudden, things that formerly were almost beyond the hope of doing, you suddenly you are doing them. Uh -huh. It's happening. You're getting the strength to do them. It's through the knowledge Amen. of Him that you receive it. Now here's another statement of the case that everything that we need to do this has been given to us. 1 Corinthians 3, 21 and 22. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Mm -hmm. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas. There you got three premier mm -hmm. preachers and teachers. Or the world. Mm -hmm. How's that? or life, or death, or things present, mm -hmm. or things to come, all are yours. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't just get them all at one time. That's not what he's saying. It's not like you get these and warehouse them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tear down your bars and build bigger ones. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that when you come, when the world like begins to press upon you, you remember this, the world belongs to you. Mm -hmm. You don't belong to it. 
So you can use the world. Rather than abusing the world or the world using you, you can use the world because it's yours. Amen. Turn it to your advantage. Amen. Then there's life. You can uh, sit about one. I wonder if I, how long I'm going to live. I wonder what kind of state I'll be in while I'm living. You can. Life belongs to you. Mm -hmm. You don't belong to it. And God, that is in the context of life. God will work with you to get the best out of life that you need. Amen. How about this death? Death. It's good to know when you come time to die that death belongs to you. Mm -hmm. You don't belong to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's an enemy. <laughs> but it's in your territory. You're not in its territory. So you can die well. We used to say in, uh, in Indiana, I come across this, uh, this thought was developed when I was in Ohio one time and we were having a revival meeting there and... <clears throat> And we had several baptisms, and we had to go to one of the local churches to baptize them. And they're very. And we were meeting in a Grange Hall out in the country. And the thing was packed out. And anyway, the clergymen were very concerned about how the meeting was going, what was happening out there. They weren't interested enough to come, but at any rate, they were very interested. And so they asked, "Well, how's the how's the attendance out there?" One brother and I had tutored and said to them, well, we're running under 500 every night. And the minister said, not bad. We didn't tell them how much under 500. <laughs> so I asked this brother, I said, brother, brother Payne, he said, uh, what's the most distinguishing trait in your church, would you say, the most, the most distinctive thing about your, your congregation? Well, it kind of took him off guard because these are not fashionable questions to ask. So he thought and he thought and finally said, well, I think it's because we want the Word of God. Well, that was, that was a good trait. It's a very, very good. Mm -hmm. And then he said, well, what's the most distinguishing trait about your church? I said, we die well. Mm -hmm. And we did. All our members did die well. <laughs> mm -hmm. We die well. Amen. See, if you're in Christ, you can die well. Mm -hmm. You can live well, die well. All belongs to you. All belongs to you. And if it's things present, well, it could be a crisis of some kind. Everything present isn't, you know, wonderful. Could be a crisis. Could be like if you're Paul. Could be a chain. Could be a chain. Could be having to be over a stake and be whipped, like he was five times. It belonged to him. Well, I'm in this chain. I think I'll write an epistle. See, belongs to you. Is what you do with what's present. Mm -hmm. It's not what the present thing is, because there are some very challenging circumstances in life. Believe me, you well, you know this already. Very challenging circumstances, but they belong to you. And things to come, you can say, "Oh, what about what if a tsunami wave hits here? Or well, what are we going to do if a tornado comes here?" And you can spend your life fretting about this, but you can say, "The things to come, they belong to me too." Now, it doesn't mean you can go out and command it to disappear. That isn't mm -hmm. what it means. It means it can't take you from Christ. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. what this means. Amen. The world can't snatch you from Christ. Things present can't snatch you from Christ. Life or death or things to come can't snatch you from Christ. They're yours. Mm -hmm. And if you can see them right in them, you can find a reason to trust God and a reason to have hope in God. They all belong to you. So it makes sense to keep the commandment, being as all these things are given to us. Here's another thing that may, gives good reason now to keep the commandment. There's coming a time when all the restrictions are going to be removed. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's just take the ultimate restriction, which is Satan. He's the ultimate. He's the father of all the others. <clears throat> we read in Scripture, God couldn't keep the secrets. He just announces ahead of time. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Amen. There it is. Yeah. Recorded. He's not there now. <laughs> He's on the earth. Uh -huh. Walking to and fro, seeking him a may devour. Now when you confront Satan, and you surely will, don't like start holding dialogues with him and this sort of thing. You might initiate a conversation like I noticed that you have a rather large bruise on your head. <laughs> Something of that sort. Well, that I've read of your demise. You have no doubt read of my promotion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, uh, you have no doubt read of my promotion when I will reign with Christ. I have read of your demotion mm -hmm. when you're going to be cast, and he'll run. He doesn't like to hear this. That's right. He doesn't like to hear this. So that yeah. makes that makes keeping the commandment until the end. Amen. <laughs> makes it makes good sense to do so. Mm -hmm. And the world is is passing away. First John 2.17, the world passes away and the lust thereof. So you'll never again have one of these competing desires. Is that a pleasant thing to think about? Amen. Now sometimes you have to throw them out. You have to do battle against them. Some delusive and distracting thought. But think of the time when they're gonna, they won't even exist. Yeah. They'll be gone. So it makes good sense to keep the commandment. And there's coming deliverance from the body that's coming. Because all of our difficulty had to do with this, this body. You get out of this body, you're out of the gunshot of the devil. Mm -hmm. The devil can't shoot as his arrows as far as you are when you're out of the body. Yeah. <laughs> you're out of his range. So the scriptures tell us things like this, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And like his faith answers back, I thank God through Jesus Christ my Lord. See, he knows he's going to be delivered from this. This is mm -hmm. a temporary situation, which means all your troubles are a temporary situation. Yeah. Which means all your challenges are temporal situations, all temporal. Mm -hmm. Philippians 3, 20 and 21 says, Our conversation or manner of life is in heaven, from whence we also look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, yeah. that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he's able to subdue all things to himself. So here... We're going to be delivered from this restricting mm -hmm. element. So now doesn't it make sense to keep the commandment until... It's just until then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just until then. Then, you, then it'll just be... It'll be a permanent part of you. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be a permanent part of you then, see, and there won't be any part of you that competes, fights against it. Now you have it written upon your heart, but there's some other things that you... in your body with you. And here's another good reason. Jesus is going to produce victory. Yeah. You know that text that says he doesn't break a bruised reed or quench a smoking flax? And the last half of that verse is especially good. It says a bruised reed shall he not break and smoking flax he shall not quench till, till he shall bring forth judgment unto victory. Oh, that's good, isn't it? He's going to bring forth judgment unto victory. Mm -hmm. So your victory is going to come through judgment. Mm -hmm. How's that? How can you lose in a case like this? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give account for the deeds done in the body, whether the good or whether the bad. But if you keep the commandment of the the outcome of judgment will be victory. You'll bring forth judgment unto victory. Glorious. <coughs> and we will ever be with the Lord, as the scripture says. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So it makes sense to keep the, keep the commandment until then. All right, now in keeping the commandment, the, the thing that must dominate a person's hearts and mind isn't the necessity of keeping the commandment. That, the commandment does need to be kept. I don't mean to in insinuate that that's not true. But that's not a strong enough incentive. The fact that I've got to do it, that's not a strong enough incentive for it to be done. Mm -hmm. You've got to have this element of hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're saved by hope. Romans 8, 24 and 25. Hope that's seen is not hope. If a man see it, why doth he yet hope for it? But if he doesn't see it, then with he with patience waits for it. Now the saved by hope, it's just like your sins aren't forgiven by hope. It's not saved in that sense. This is saved in the sense, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's that mm -hmm. sense. This is saved in the sense, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Mm -hmm. And if Christ's return is big enough in your thinking, it makes it it compels you to do all of these other things. You work out your salvation with fear and trembling in anticipation of Christ coming. It's called the blessed hope of the church. <laughs> Listen how the scriptures speak about Christ's coming. In our text it says, keep the commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the same type of thing in 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will make, bring to light the hidden things of darkness and make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise from God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, so you, maybe you would like people to say a little better things about you. 
Hold on now until the Lord come. His, wait till you hear what He has to say about you yeah. before an assembled universe. And 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six at this Lord's table. We do show the Lord's death till He comes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the... In other words, you're looking at that while you do this. In other words, you're looking at Christ's return while you're dealing with people reproaching you. Mm -hmm. This sort of thing. Or maybe with the tendency to judge other people. Maybe you're wrestling with that. And you, you, the commandment becomes doable. You can do it without spot if you're thinking about Jesus coming again. It's the blessed hope of the church. That's, that's Christ coming. The blessed, the blessed hope. The blessed and glorious hope of the church mm -hmm. is, the, is the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we patiently wait for Him. Patiently means we keep we keep making progress. We keep running, waiting for Him, because when He comes, the trouble is done. Amen. The Amen. conflict is over. Amen. And there won't be any more keeping the commandment with a competing with a competition. Uh -huh. It won't. There will be the end of that. Keep the commandment until then. That's a limitation. Until then. Then we're not going to be talking about terms of commandments. We're not going to be talking in terms of commandments then. We're going to be talking about having right to the tree of life. And drinking of the water of life directly, not the second-hand source. Mm -hmm. So the conclusion, is, as I see it to some of these things, is that to mystify Christ's coming compounds the matter of obedience. Mm -hmm. If the coming of Christ, if a person is unsure about the coming of Christ and some of the nuances that are revealed about it, if this is an area of doctrinal confusion, obedience will not, you'll not be able to obey Him as you want. You won't be able to keep the commandment because it's, the ability to keep the commandment directly <coughs> corresponds to how clear Christ's return is in your heart and mind. And if it's clear and getting clearer, you'll not have trouble wanting to do God's will. Amen. Then if you want to do God's will, I will tell you right up front, you will be able to do it. Amen. Your people, God's people are made willing in the day of, of His power.